Quinn, yeah, Quinn is spot on when it comes to safety. He is from the New England area, so I'm trying to uh, smooth that edge out on him just a little bit, make him a Southern boy a little bit. But he, he is really critical to the day-to-day -day safety that's going on out there. Yeah, my name is Quinn Hutchinson. I'm a safety manager for BL Harbert here on the Vesta Project. Uh, been here on site since January 18th of this year. Been with the company since 2003. Uh, so I've been, you know, quite a while with them. So what we would have here is some plumbing penetrations that's coming up from the floor below. Uh, and I don't know if they're in the process of still making those penetrations with the pipe like they have over here. Uh, but in the meantime, it leaves a hazard open for what's anybody working down below. Somebody may kick a piece of concrete, a, nut, a bolt down below, hit somebody down below off the hard hat, off their head. Potential for injury there, and we want to avoid that at all costs. So we need to have hole covers in place. Another thing that Harbert likes to do is make sure, number one, our cable rails are taut, they're nice and tight, and also we want to flag them to make it highly visible for somebody may be walking up to it, they don't just go right off the edge and everything. So we, we try to put flagging roughly about every six foot, and that way there it helps to identify where the leading edge is. So everything going on for y'all? Yes, sir. Good deal. Get it all cribbed up properly, the line's not gonna drop? Nope. All right. Y'all have a great day. Be safe, all right? All right? My job out here, walking the site, keep an eye on everybody, make sure they remember to tie off, uh, make sure they remember to hook that, that chain, uh, put on their high visibility, wear their safety glasses, things along that line. Uh, it may seem redundant, but it's a job that's important, and I do take it personally, because I don't want to see any of my employees get hurt on the job. I said, Officer Pitts, what, what are we gonna, what, you know, what? He said, you know, he said, your permit's expired. I said, what does that mean? He said, no noise before seven o'clock until you get that permit renewed. So I call Zeke, and then of course, I get voicemail. Really? Yes. Let's go see Zeke. Today, I got a phone call from the city of Birmingham, a detective with the city of Birmingham. He advised me that uh, we had a permit that had expired with the traffic department, and until that permit is renewed, we cannot have any noise before 7 a.m. We have a scheduled concrete pour at three o'clock in the morning on Thursday morning. And right now, I don't know if and when we're gonna pour that slab. I got here this morning at 1.50, um, no traffic. We're gonna pour 237 for the, uh, the high rise, then we're gonna go 200 plus up on the mid rise, uh, starting at eight o'clock. All the, uh, the south grade beams, that'll finish out the south end of the mid rise. Finish that, and then we can get our plumbers up there and start uh, start running the trunk lines. So this is what our job site looks like at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So the good thing is we got concrete here, we got people here. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of drama right now, and we're making the pour like we need it to. That's kind of the the big picture where you got to get to is is out of all that junk that you got to deal with every day, did we make the pour? So we're on. You tight. You gotta leave this here, go home, be at home for a little while, and then go to bed a couple hours once you get home, and then get up a few times a night with the baby, try to get it to sleep, and then you you right back up coming here. It's, sometimes it's hard to switch one off from the other, you know. So yesterday I had to go down to the city and try to get a what's called a noise permit to allow us to pour concrete between 10 o'clock at night, seven o'clock in the morning. So I went down to the city, met with them. They gave us a temporary permit to make this pour, but we've got to be able to find a permanent solution. We don't have one right now. So we're working with the city, trying to work with the neighbors over here to try to come up with a solution that makes them happy, but still allows us to pour concrete at three o'clock in the morning.